All right, working on the second challenge on the conditional checks lesson, we're asked to rewrite the following function to use a while loop instead of a for loop. And the function is called Fibonacci sequence maker. And we're given one parameter that's called larger than, it's an integer, and it represents some number that the, sequen the Fibonacci sequence should be calculated until it is greater than. We want to return in the end, we want to return in the end uh, the Fibonacci sequence up until that number, right? The Fibonacci sequence that are all the numbers up into, but not including uh, that number, if it were a number of the Fibonacci sequence. We are, uh, let's go ahead and trace this code, right? We're given the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, uh, one, one, right? And then to find the third number in the sequence, we add these together, right? One plus one is two, and then for the third number, or excuse me, the fourth number in the series, you add the second and third together. So two plus one is three, three plus two is five, five plus three is eight, five plus eight is 13, eight plus 13 is 21, 21 plus 13 is 34, so on and so forth, right? And it's this, this very popular, common sequence of numbers in mathematics. And it seems that not knowing how large this larger than parameter is going to be, to write this in a for loop, you just sort of have to choose an arbitrarily large number for your upper bound and hope that your larger than parameter or argument is going to be smaller than that, right? There's no really other way to, to deal with that. So um, we start at two, right? Because um, we're trying to start by finding the, we're talking about the index of our list. We're trying to start with the third item in our list. We've already got the first item and the second item, index zero and index one respectively. So we want to start at two and go to some arbitrarily large number. And we're going to add, right, from our Fibonacci sequence, the number two ago uh, and the number one ago, right? So for the third number, I add the first and second number. For the fourth number, the second and third, so on and so forth, right? I find that value. Then I add that value onto my list. Then I say, hey, if that number is larger than my parameter, right, that this sort of threshold that I'm trying to stay under, let's go ahead and break this loop and return the sequence as it is, right? Our task is to rewrite this with a while loop. It says, do not hard code a counter into the while loop. Use a Boolean statement as the stopping condition for a loop, right? It's saying it doesn't want us to use um, a, a strict counter, right, to, to count, like, it doesn't want some sort of, you know, while true, and then just to say, um, if counter is greater than, um, some, some number break, right, it's telling us it specifically does not want a break statement. It wants us to use this Boolean condition, right, to, to break the loop um, explicitly, right? So we have got to keep that in mind when we're writing our function. Now, I'm given this Fibonacci sequence, and I need to use that sequence in order to create more of my sequence. And if I look at this code up here, there's one piece that's really important here that, that I don't think I can get away with not using. And I think that's actually the index, right? I don't think that I'm going to be able to recreate this without knowing, hey, I'm looking for the third number or index two or the fifth number, index five, right? Each time I'm going through this, I need to know which index I'm finding in order to know the previous numbers that I'm adding up to get to. So let's go ahead and jump in. And much like we started the index value at two in our for loop, we're gonna start the index value at two here. Now we're also given a while loop and it wants us to say, you know, this is basically what we have in our if statement in this for loop up here, right? If fibval is greater than larger than, right? If I were to say if fibval is greater than, you know, my threshold, which is called larger than, then, 
excuse me, I only want to keep going, right? We're negating that statement. It's the opposite. I only want to keep going if it's less than, right? I have a problem here. I don't have a fib val yet, right? My fib val, right? My current Fibonacci value that I'm going to be referencing will always be the last value in my list, right? So instead of referencing fib val here, right? I'm just going to get a little clever. I'm going to put a fib val sequence and I'm just going to throw a negative one here, right? We're just going to say the last number in my sequence, right? The last number in my list. As long as that's less than this threshold, we're going to keep going. So we're going to keep going. What I need to do is I need to say, oh, my fib value, and this is just line this line is coming straight out of the for loop. Actually, both of these next two lines are coming straight out of the for loop, right? We're just calculating the Fibonacci value, right? The only difference is instead of I, I've used IDX. Don't know what that was there, but I don't like it. So let me change my I to an IDX. IDX minus two plus IDX minus one. I'm gonna append that value. I'm only going to do that while my condition is true. And then when I'm done with the whole thing, I'm going to want to go ahead and return that sequence. Make sure I've got an empty line at the bottom. Go ahead and give that a test. And it looks like my test is running here for a while. And I've done the thing that you shouldn't do, right? The test took too long, executed. It took too many resources. That's a big clue to me. You have to increment that index, right? Uh, otherwise, it's just adding the same numbers over and over and over and over and over. And this is just this list is one, one, two, 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 right? Because my index was never changing. Now let's give this a test. I think we should be in good shape. We can see that's true. Looks like whoever wrote this before me took a very similar approach. Looks like that they um they looked at this a little bit differently. Right. They said whatever our index is minus one is going to represent the end of our list. So so they talked about that a little bit differently, but everything else is the same. That's it for this challenge. We have one more challenge on this lesson. I'll see you over there in the next video.